The second part of our uh, evening presentations is going to be about AOSS and the Wisconsin idea. And when we were first imagining what the night's activities might include, it occurred to me that reference to the Wisconsin idea and how this department has lived up to the challenge and inherent in that concept really was something we had to celebrate. So nobody disagreed, and so I set out to find the best person I could to offer that testimony. It didn't take me long to realize that the perfect person, a person who's been in the catbird seat for this topic for decades, was readily available. So when I asked Steve Ackerman if he would take on the challenge, he didn't hesitate. And when I first met Steve almost 30 years ago, I knew immediately that I'd come in contact with a bright light. He instantly radiated warmth, uh, in a genuine colleagueship that quickly grew into a, a long lasting friendship. And despite the enormous disadvantage that he suffers through speaking whatever bastardization of English it is that people learn on Long Island, <laughs> he's been a consistent and remarkable communicator and evangelist of the Wisconsin idea. Steve arrived on the campus as an associate researcher in SCC in 1997 and he joined the faculty five years later. He was widely recognized as a peerless instructor both on campus and by the AMS. And then he set off, set off on a lengthy administrative career, during which he served as interim director of SSCC, 18 years as director of SIMS, associate vice chancellor for research in the physical sciences, and finally as the vice chancellor for research and graduate education, a position from which he retired just a couple of weeks ago, actually. And in these many capacities, Steve has witnessed the power of the Wisconsin idea, and I was thrilled when he agreed to share some of his experience with us this evening. Unfortunately, COVID-19 uh, intervened. Steve tested positive earlier this week and he can't join us tonight. So I have to stand in and deliver his presentation, which he had prepared to give himself. So I'm sorry that he can't be here to do it. But the Wisconsin idea is the iconic philosophical foundation of the University of Wisconsin system. First articulated in 1905 by the then President Charles Van Heys, put into action in the Wisconsin legislature under Governor La Follette, and named finally the Wisconsin idea by author Charles McCarthy in 1912. And it's derived from the notion of the university as a community of scholars. People who strive both to attain an understanding of the larger world and to bring that understanding to bear on shaping the future direction of that world. Anyone who has spent any time around this university knows with very little prompting that we strive to do great things here. And here at Wisconsin, we are asked to go further than that to strive to share those things with the citizens of this state and the nation. And that signature desire is enshrined in this unique Wisconsin idea, which has guided the mission of this university and contributed to the construction of an enviable quality of life in this state for over a century. Recently, we had a governor who thought that wasn't such a good idea. And after he was exposed for his idiocy, he said that it was a drafting error. Now, a drafting error is picking Aaron Rodgers in the fourth round. <laughs> Discrediting the Wisconsin idea is not a drafting error. This idea compels us to think about the borders of the university being the borders of the state. And in another way of thinking, and especially apt for our department, the pursuit of scholarship cannot be undertaken in the absence of fellowship. We have a very functional department, the most functional department I know of in our college. Because I had nine years as chair of me going to meetings, and I know people don't really get along with each other in some other departments. We don't have that problem. We never have had that problem. That's remarkable. Weather and climate are ready-made for public engagement. They're ready-made questions for public engagement. Here's the storm ready designation from 2015. Familiar faces in there. There's Louie next to our dearly departed chancellor, Flank. There's Steve, Margaret Mooney, Shane Hubbard, the whole bunch of UW people from our department. Uh, the weather and climate enjoy wide public interest and represent the public's, I think, most familiar contact with science. And the engagement that we make with the public provides enormous educational benefit to ourselves, to our students, as well as providing a genuinely interested public and insight into the nature and importance of scientific work in a democratic society. I don't think there's anybody here tonight who would not agree with the fact that that's a critically important element of what we do at this university. Teach people how to think. We do not indoctrinate people. We teach them how to make decisions based on evidence and analysis. Weather and climate are excellent uh, topics for public presentations. Here's our dearly departed David and Barbara Houghton at the Houghton Symposium in 2006. Uh, and David made a habit of making talks around the state about climate change. 
and here's a quote from one of his papers uh, about that activity. Climate change is more than just an ordinary research topic. Scientists need to truly mingle and engage in discussion on the subject. Climate change issues involve our world community, our global environment, and our personal quality of life. And I'll say they add the challenge of we need to get people to agree and work together with each other. That's a challenge that no prior generation has faced, but the one that is graduating from our department now and in the next 10 years will be facing that for the rest of their career. Professor Bernasumi gave lots of talks at community organizations, and they were mostly about satellites and benefits. Now look at this picture carefully. Both Sumi and the young lad that he's talking to are wearing jackets, autumnal sort of wear. He's got a fan out on the lawn, and it looks like maybe a, a, a plate full of water. He's definitely demonstrating some scientific principle on a not particularly warm day, but he's using a fan to do it. So he's always doing something to, to extend education beyond what was going on in his own lab. We, Steve and I, have been lucky enough through the efforts of Terry Gregory, who first wrangled us a one-time spot on Larry Miller's show in 1997, to be now regular re uh, guests on the show once a month. We've been doing that since, well, for 26 years now. It's thrilling. He has a little audio bike here that he put in here, but it, well, I can't amplify it. But what it was is Larry says he knows I hate the Farmers Almanac. And so every year around this time, he'll ask me a question. So what do you think about this year's Farmers Almanac, John? And, I, and I'll say something along the lines of, well, I refuse to, or it was Groundhog Day in this case. What do you think about Groundhog Day? I said, well, I refuse to surrender the intellectual reins of deciding about the weather and climate to a furry little rodent. I won't do that. And so we get everybody in the studio laughs. We imagine the people listening laugh. They recognize that we're just regular people with a particularly strong interest in various issues. And we're happy to share them. And that's part of the Wisconsin idea. So we learned things as well. This picture didn't come out too bad. This is a picture of an N-shaped rainbow, which you can get when you have a rainbow reflected off a calm lake surface. So we never knew that before. We had to go and do the research. Somebody sent in a picture. Oh, there it is, sorry. So look at that, it's an N-shaped rainbow. Isn't that cool? And that's how it comes about. Um, and we also have had, since about 2008, the opportunity to write a weekly call called Ask the Weather Guy. Nobody ever asks us anything. <laughs> we have to make up the questions and the answers every week. Please send us some damn questions. <laughs> How many times, can, well, I talk about Columbus coming across the ocean around this time of year. Well, I didn't hit any tropical cyclones. But I can't do that every year. I have to do it every fourth year or something. You know, I need more questions. But it's really great. I mean, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, we have this opportunity to talk about weather and climate issues from our professional perspective to a, watch, to a very interested audience. And occasionally, the paper will let us make a comment on a politician, either nationally or locally, who is being willfully ignorant. At the beginning of our careers in this, they did not let us do that. They've always cut it down. Now we kind of earned the right, like Tom Stilling has on WGN for an eight minute weather uh, program. We get a little bit of a chance to do that occasionally. But it's most important that we get to just remind people that this is a science and that one can approach understanding the environment around you from a logical, evidence-based point of view. And we really do enjoy that activity. And it was really started by a collaboration from the NSF-funded Wi Files. And the Wild Files is a great organization to collaborate with because you can sometimes get the uh, opportunity to, to run into some great graphic artists and some various other types of things that can help your enterprise. So we've really benefited from that. Again, an example of how engaging with the public or engaging with another entity not only does them a service, but you get a service back. And that's at the core of the Wisconsin idea. Uh, Badger Talks are organized by the Wisconsin Alumni Association. I'm sure I don't have a complete list here. Steve put this together and I didn't uh, do my own research, but some of the speakers have been Steve. I know Anker's done it. I know Dan's done it. He's not on this list. I've done it a couple times. Till has done it. Undoubtedly others. And there will be others to come. And so this is an opportunity to go around the state and talk about what you're thinking about and what you're working on. And people love it. They just love it. Uh, to, to hear from people like us. One of those talks ended up at the Fifth Symposium on Education in Atlanta a couple of years ago, uh, and it was the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald storm. And uh, the storm, I should say, and the song. And John Knox and Steve have done a really uh, bang up job on that story, so it's really quite interesting. And the state climatology office, I completely agree with Louie, gets almost no credit for what it does for the state. I'm really excited that with Steve's leadership, it's likely to be modernized and turned into a really serious um, activity that, that encompasses a lot more of this, the landscape for a climate office that we've been able to do with the limited staff. Thank you to John and Ed for manning it for the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, which is about with no funding. But there's a picture of 
Yeah, now the State Pine College uh, office is open for business. We're in agricultural state, so there's farming interest. We talk to Steve if you want to talk about the weather. There's weather whiplash. What's going on? Who can we talk to? Who can we turn to? How about our hot, smoky, dry summer this year? There were lots of conversations about that. You need to have point people you can go to. And if everyone in our department were handing up the phone when the press calls, which doesn't happen, we would have absolutely no presence in these discussions. And that's a tragedy. In fact, it's immoral because we're being supported by the very citizens who are calling on us for our expertise. Um, so this, I could go on and on and on about this. I really do feel strongly about uh, the Wisconsin idea, and especially insofar as it uh, deals with dealing with the press. We have lots of other opportunities to demonstrate how committed this department and its affiliates are with the Wisconsin idea. The sky's the limit. There's a STEM camp for autistic youth in a learning environment created by Mike Mutaro, who's now the director of the uh, Center for Climate Research. So there's a picture of Mike with one of his students, I think maybe from last summer. Every April since 2002, so now going on 22 years, AOSS is part of a UW science expedition. And that's a fantastic activity. It outreaches to all the people here in Madison and surrounding communities who come into campus for that weekend. SIMS has an Office of Education and Public Outreach. We develop content and resources to prepare the next generation of scientists, and also, again, to share the benefits of our work with the public, who is funding. Here's another example. Two of our assistant professors who are going to be highlighted in the next part of the program, uh, Professor Angel Adamis Corralisa and Professor Mayra Oyola Merced, our um, co-hosts of uh, Tiempo Clima in Tierra podcast. And that's in the Spanish language. It's not spoken like that in the Spanish language. <laughs> I can read your beautiful language, I just can't speak it. Uh, but it's for the general public, and again, this is outreach to people who are interested in weather and climate issues. We're doing this all the time. This is, we didn't talk to Angel and Myra when they came here and said, hey, you guys should get involved in Wisconsin ideas, like Louis said. They just see that as part of the culture and jump right on. Um, Hannah Zanowski has worked tirelessly over the last couple of years, another of our assistant professors, to establish an NSF research experience for undergraduates program. It was in its first real run this summer, but a summer prior to that, it was sort of a, I don't know what, what to call it, I hope I'm not insulting the effort, Hannah, by calling it a, 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 a first attempt, but it was only fully funded for this year. But look what we're doing. We're getting how many people? 10 students for 10 full weeks over the summer. And they make contact with a lot of our people on staff, both in the in the, uh, the SCC as well as in the faculty, and they're learning things about what's going on in this science. And we're turning them on to thinking about, hey, I could do this too. Why not me? And that's maybe the part of the Wisconsin idea that, that pertains most to students. Why not me? And that's what we're doing. So I think this is a great place to end this presentation there's so much more work to do, but there's so much eagerness in our faculty, in our staff, and in our scientists, and in our alumni. Uh, you wouldn't even be here tonight if you weren't eager to join with us in celebrating what a great place this is and what an impact and what a footprint it has on our society in the state and the nation. And I want to thank you all for that, and I want to thank you all for your continued efforts in all of these various activities that we should rightly celebrate. So thanks very much. for time. If I put this presentation together, I would never have ended it with questions. No. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take the questions out at the bar. We're not going to do it right now. <laughs>